What's up guys? How are we doing? Hey, thanks for checking in and don't forget to subscribe. I know I have to remind you guys, 70, over 70% 70 of the viewers are not subscribed. It helps the algorithm if you hit that little subscribe button. So if you do, I appreciate it. And that's all I'll say about the subscribing. So without further ado, let's get into this bad boy. I'm in the empire business. Everybody love everybody! You all know exactly who I am. All right, guys, World Supercross, it's finally here. So World Supercross is in Cardiff, I believe is where it's at. Um, needless to say, it doesn't matter because uh, it's on Fox Sports 1. It'll be on Sunday. It's a tape delay. Um, it's on, I believe, at 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock Eastern on FS1. Check your lo local listings. I am disappointed because there are some knuckleheads like me who would stay up all night if I could get it live. But there will be a 24-hour live streaming delay because they want to give it to FS1 first. So if you want to not know the results, make sure you don't click anything, don't go on the internet, and just go on FS1. Uh, I believe, double check your local listings, but I believe it's on FS1 at 2 o'clock Pacific time, 5 o'clock Eastern time. So... Anyway, guys, I want to thank my new partner, EBC Brakes. EBC Brakes, they've supported me for quite a while. There's some good people over there. I mean, they do brakes, clutches. Um, yeah, it's just they're good people. Oversized rotors, you name it. Solid company. Um, yeah, so definitely give some love to EBC Brakes. Let them know uh, you heard about them, or if you're on their social media, let them know, hey, thanks for supporting Cooksey. Uh so I'm going to start with your 250 power rankings for World Supercross. And this got really difficult, guys, because guys, there's some, some really credentialed riders that have been out for a while that are coming back. I don't know, guys jumping down to the 250. It's a bit of a crapshoot, but this is what I came up with. Number one, Mitchell Oldenburg. I mean, this guy's really, really fast. Speed has never been his issue. Consistency and crashes is something that's always gotten his way. I think he can get it done in, in two rounds. Um, so I'm going to go with Mitchell Oldenburg as your favorite to be the world champion, in my opinion, at least the first round. Although Shane McElrath, who's also extremely fast, a former winner here, um, and, and Oldenburg's never won a Supercross in the United States. McElrath's won a lot and almost won titles, but he's dropping back down off the 450, so I don't have as much confidence in him. But after one round, if he comes out and wins, I'll be like, okay, well, there's the old McElrath, so there we go. Uh, Cole Seeley, same thing. Here's a guy who's been retired, but his talent meter is just through the roof. He's, you know, Mitchell Oldenburg's teammate and on the on the um, the Moto Concepts team. So, yeah, I'm looking for him. God, I mean, he could easily just dominate these guys. Or he could look out of sorts, rusty. I'm not sure what we're going to get out of Cole Seeley, but I'm excited to see him. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty cool lineup that we got right there. Shane McElrath, Cole Seeley. I mean, this is a throwback here, guys. Uh, and then we got the veteran, Chris Blos, who's always solid. Everybody counts him out. I don't. Chris Blos, while he's not going to win, he's always fast. He knows this format. He's raced this format quite a few times in Australia where they do the six laps, re-rack, six laps, re-rack, ten laps. He's good at this, and he's he's smart. He understands it. He's going to be right there, so I have him at number four. And don't be surprised if he wins. Like Chris Blos is that good. My question is, since he's been semi-retired, has he put as much effort? Has he been building his business? Um, he has a, sus a suspension company out in Phoenix. So, Justin Bogle, um, Justin Bogle dropping down to the 250. Another 250 champion returning. A guy who's won races. He hasn't been on a 250 in a long time. He's off of the Suzuki. He's on the MDK team. I believe, I have to double check, but I believe he's on the MDK team. And Justin Bogle, anytime this guy lines up on a, on a 250, uh, until I see otherwise, he's a top five guy. So I've got him at number five. And then we got some really interesting guys to watch. Matt Moss. Matt Moss is a guy who was suspended for four years for using a chemical called Osterine. It creates lean muscle. Probably really good for you if you're not racing under water rules, but under water, they're like, uh, yeah, I don't think so, guys. Don't be using this. And him and his brother both got four-year bans. Apparently, that was up. That was back December 2017. And by my math, he's free and clear. So 
Matt Moss making his return. Jace Owen, who's always fast, um, arena cross guy. Kyle Chisholm. Chisholm did really well in the fill-in for the Star 250. Um, Wilson Todd, the Australian, he's really fast. Thomas Doe, a European guy who's also very familiar with this format. Um, and then Max Anstey. The only reason I don't have Max Anstey in the top five, he has got a resume that's flat out amazing. I haven't seen him on the 250 look good enough. He looks big to me. He looks like a big guy. That hurts on the 250. He's on a Honda. It's not like he's on a Star Yamaha where I wouldn't be concerned. Um, so Max Anstey could easily get into the top five, but right now in the power rankings, I don't have him in the top five before the first round. And remember guys, this is just the trial season. This isn't even the actual real season for World Supercross. So before everybody just measures them up against last year or Feld or all these major Supercross series, this is a test run, guys. This is literally, they really aren't bringing the series out until 2023. 2022 is just a dry run to kind of shake the cobwebs out, see where they're at, see what they need to work on, what works, what doesn't, and just and just build off it. They're on a five-year program. Their series is built around making teams profitable and making teams their own business. They're their own team owners. Um, it's interesting. It's different than what we have over here in the United States. So, guys, if you uh, if you need some supplements, if you're dragging ass, if you've had a concussion, if you just want to perform better in the bedroom, hit up my friends over at Steel City Men's Clinic. Uh, they'll run your blood work. They'll tell you what you need. I mean, hey, if you don't even need stuff, they're, they'll get you stuff to just optimize you. If you just want to be optimized, if you want to find out exactly what, if you want to get to peak testosterone, not necessarily like juice yourself out, but if you just want to get to the right levels, if you're hovering on that lower zone, you don't necessarily need testosterone, but you want it to get to the higher recommended zones, I'm sure they could work that out. So anyway, guys, hit up Steel City Men's Clinic. Uh, link is in the bottom and they'll get you dialed in. And I had a lot of people hit me up about Kenneth Feld. And I did a video essentially saying how it looks to me as though he's kind of a creep. I'm a full on rapist, you know, uh, Africans, dyslexics, children, that sort of thing. When I watched the Super Motocross, um, which what a dumb name, I'm sorry, Super Moto. There's a thing called Super Moto. You have street tires on a dirt bike. Uh, so it's so confusing to call it super motocross. Could you be less original? And then they say they've been working on it for so long. If they've been working on it for so long, you can't tell me in those creative groups. They couldn't have come up with something that was better. Um, anyway, that rant aside, when I saw Kenneth Feld, I was surprised. He's usually hands off. Um, he looked like a creep. People ask why I put that out there. Because I draw the line at anyone who fucks with kids. Um, according to his head of security, he was well aware in the circus that there were pedophiles that were abusing children, rapes, and other stuff. That was his head of security who testified under oath, who would go to jail if they caught him lying. That Kenneth Feld knew this went on. Sorry guys, I'm not just I'm just not down with that. I'm a big fan of Andy Frisilla, and if you guys listen to Andy Frisilla, uh, you'll know uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say the wood chipper. Uh, Pedos going wood chippers. That's it. And if it were up to me, if you allow that to go on, whether you are or not, if you allow it, just ask Joe Paterno how that worked out. If you allow it, in my opinion, you're just as bad as it. If you don't step in and, and protect kids, kids need saving. Wood chipper you go. So I, I would I would have just assumed I have I don't have a problem with Feld in particular as far as the company. There's some really good people over there. Dave Prater, Mike Mewey, uh, Sean Brennan, although you know they've kind of isolated me. But I don't care. I think those guys are all pretty good guys and they're doing what they need to do. Um, but why, why put this guy up here with all this in his background? It's a bad move. It's stupid. I don't know if they just thought nobody would remember. Um, but yeah, Kenneth Field, just go away. And for Carrie Coombs to act the way she did, it just, I'm sorry, man, it just rubbed me wrong. Um, I don't want to see, and somebody goes, oh, well, if you trash fell, the series will go away. No, it won't. Guess what, guys? That's why they're trying the stranglehold on it, because they're scared to death somebody could take their cash cow. If they go away, there'll be another series next year. There's people with money ready to line up to do this sport and do it in different ways. But right now, 
they have a grasp on it and they're not letting go. So the best thing Super Motocross did was get the Peacock deal across the whole board. So we know where to go, when to go, and that's it. That's literally the best thing that came out of it. I'm extremely disappointed to see where the money's at and how privateers and guys on the back half of that top 20 um, or top 40 that make the night show, they're probably not going to see any of this extra money. They're probably going to have to keep paying their stupid entry fees, which is bullshit that these performers will have to pay. I, I can't even believe that it's allowed in this day and age that, that that's the way it is. Um, that's why we need a writer's association. So bad. So bad, guys. Come on. And I'm talking to all you guys on the top who are making good money and who have, have, have your stuff. You're not doing it for you. It's going to take some people with some selflessness to do it for the next generation. Ken Roxon just gave up a lot of money. Uh, he had a lucrative deal to go to Honda for what he sees as the greater good. Um, there's a couple different stories on that one. It wasn't all. Uh, yeah. But needless to say, guys, um, we're going to need some, some selfless dudes to step up probably lose some money on their end, but they do it for the history of the sport. It's going to take, uh, and at this point, I think Tomac's even too old. You need some younger guys. You need Cincerillo. You need Cooper Webb. You need Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, Hunter Lawrence, Joe Schmoda. If, if all those guys, honestly, if Lucas Myrtle took most of his roster and got them combined with a couple other guys, we could get this thing done. Um, and I'm not saying they roast people over the coals. I'm just saying make sure it's fair. That's it. Just open the books, make it fair, and don't exploit them. Don't treat them like circus animals. Treat them like the professional athletes they are that we want to watch. We don't want to watch Kenneth Feld and Kerry Coombs toasting and shooting off fireworks. For anyone that saw that, that was stupid and creepy. Um, we don't want to watch that. What we want to watch is the best athletes in the world compete at the highest level. So, anyway, guys. Um, I will give World Supercross credit. It's not gone. It's not been easy. And knowing what I know about how the back channeling and the the dirty maneuvers as far as taking riders and blocking riders from going to their series, sponsors. Um, there's so many little things that you guys will never see. And I mean, honestly, World Supercross might not even see. We've seen the way Kenneth Feld operates with the CIA operative where. People didn't, I mean, that, that lady they attacked, that reporter, she didn't even know someone was fucking with her. She just thought she was really unlucky. Those are the types of things that these people do, and they're not the only ones. I mean, it happens in big business everywhere, but we know for a fact it happens here. So anyway, I'm in the corner of World Supercross just simply because I want both series to have that type of a business model where they're not 100% dependent on advertising budgets of Honda, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, KTM. Because what happens? What happens if you know the world economy tanks and these these companies are in trouble? Well, guess what? They pull their advertising. They pull their advertising dollars in. These teams have no money. That series folds. The way World Supercross is built, it's not dependent on that. It's dependent on the product on the track being good, so they get the entertainment dollars, and those entertainment dollars support the racing. It's not the selling of products based off the racing that supports the product. The entertainment supports the product. And that's what I've been trying to convert this to. Professional sports is based off of, like football players don't make a ton of money because kids buy their helmets or buy their cleats. Yeah, they make a little bit. It's nice, a little extra endorsement here and there. But they make money off the entertainment of the sport. And don't give me this bullshit about it's not entertaining. People will pay to watch golf. It's about how you tell the story. If you can tell the story, I'll watch anything. Tell me the story. Tell me why I need to care. Tell me about Roxon. Tell me about when, what he does next year. Tell the fans. Tell, tell your average consumer he was with Honda for five years. He was the highest paid rider. And then he wanted to compete in a, another series, and they took his Honda away. Now he's riding this privateer, whatever he ends up on, probably a Yamaha. And it won't be that privateer. Explain the difference between uh, factory, privateer, who has money, who doesn't have money. Let's stop making them pay entry fees. Like, come on, guys. So those are the basic things. Um, I'll, I'll have everyone to bet nobody pays entry fee at next week's straight rhythm, and that's going to be awesome, guys. Huntington Beach, two strokes on the beach. If you haven't seen where they're building the track, it is epic. It's so cool. Um, 
I'm planning on heading on down there with my buddy uh, from Epic Garage Designs. So, yeah, I'm going to head down there and, uh, yeah, hang out and watch some two strokes rip, man. I'll get you guys some live footage and uh, Epic Garage Designs is building a floor out for some of the riders, the AGE guys. I'll get you some pictures of that. These floors that they do, you can take them on the road. I mean, they're pretty easy to transport. You can build your own pits. It's something you definitely want to take a look at. Um, but anyway, guys, have a good day. Remember, subscribe. Let's build this thing, and uh, let's keep pedophiles in wood chippers. Thanks, guys. Later.